Great to have you with me today. Thank you for joining us and supporting this channel. If these messages bless you, do me a favor, subscribe, like it, and share it with someone. That's how we get the message out together to see lives changed for Jesus. I'm especially excited for today because we're celebrating Pentecost. I love Pentecost. It was a defining moment in the history of the church and the world. Nothing like that had ever happened before. Revival broke out in Jerusalem and a beautiful move of the Holy Spirit started there that is still continuing to this day. So what is revival? Revival is simply God showing up in a greater measure, not only changing one life, but transforming a church or a city or a region or a nation. When God shows up tangibly, many lives are transformed. Jesus told his disciples that the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father is coming, but they had no idea what to expect. It was an unprecedented time in Israel, and it led to an unprecedented revival. There have been revivals in Israel in the Old Testament, but what followed on Pentecost was an unusual revival. A mighty outpouring of the Spirit with tongues of fire on the heads of the disciples that caused thousands upon thousands to turn to Jesus, and the Roman Empire was ultimately turned upside down, or rather right side up, as the Kingdom of God began to infiltrate every sector of society. How we need that today again. As you know, we are living in unprecedented times right now. And this is great news because this type of environment where nations are being shaken is the soil for an unprecedented revival. Unusual times open the way to unusual revivals. God is not caught off guard. He is always working and I believe he's working in many hearts right now across the nations. Revivals in the air. I love the topic of revival of reading stories of the last few hundred years where God showed up beyond the usual. And those incredible moments where God began to move in wondrous ways. It stirs one's faith for more. And I'm reminded of the God moments in my life where God showed up tangibly or spoke to me or did something that rocked my little world. And I know there's more to come. There is more of God available to you and our nation right now. When God's tangible presence floods in, anything becomes possible. Incredible miracles break out and the kingdom of God turns indifferent, cold hearts to soft, humble, hungry hearts for God. I want to stir your desire today for more of God. Over the last few weeks, I've shared how you and I can make our lives count by focusing on three priorities in a specific order. The three priorities are to firstly be aware of God. Secondly, to be aware of self, self-aware of what God is doing in you and growing into the image of Christ. And thirdly, to be aware of the people on God's heart. You can find these messages on this channel. Today, we're moving on to priority number three, to be aware of the people on God's heart in the context of Pentecost. If we truly love people, we will pursue the fullness of the Holy Spirit. It is only through the fullness of the Holy Spirit that lives are transformed. You and I cannot change one life, but God can through the Holy Spirit. Today, I want to stir your desire for more of God. Remember, you can have as much of God as you want. Over the last few weeks, I've been sharing stories of those who went to heaven after dying and who were resuscitated by medical personnel and who came back to share what they experienced. These near-death experiences 
are eye-opening. The Word of God is our anchor, but these stories fill in a few blanks for us, and it gives us a glimpse of what the Kingdom of Heaven looks like. Hearing these stories excites us for one day, that Heaven is not a boring place, but a wondrous paradise, something to look forward to. These stories also reveal to us the nature of the Kingdom of God, and how the first person that they met in heaven is themselves, but completely free, completely themselves, and free from fear, insecurity, lies, doubts, and whatever else plague them while in their physical body. They share how they receive a new body in heaven, therefore no sickness, no pain, and they experience a peace, joy, and love that words cannot describe. In that realm, there are no broken relationships, but rather perfect fellowship and love for one another. The Kingdom of Heaven is like nothing we've experienced here on Earth. It's a completely another level of everything. The Scriptures encourage us to set our minds on things above, not on the Earth, because that helps us to discover the true standard. Heaven's standard instead of what we've become used to here. There's a huge difference between this fallen, sin-ridden, broken world and the Kingdom of Heaven. The best this world offers us is a mere shadow, a fraction of the Kingdom of Heaven. This world is in a spiritual shadow with another ruler and much evil causing havoc. In this realm, we struggle. Relationships suffer. Many are tormented by anxiety, doubts, anger, and hatred for one another. But in the Kingdom of Heaven, there is peace, relational unity, only healthy bodies and hearts. Heaven is the paradise that we all long for, and that is our future as children of God. Heaven is the standard, but we've become so used to this world that we're not aware how fallen it is or how spiritually dark this is compared to Heaven. The Kingdom of Heaven is superior to this world on every level. What if we don't have to wait for one day? What if you and I could experience a measure of Heaven here on Earth right now? That is what Pentecost is about. That is what revival is about. It is a bit of heaven breaking out into this world, and it brings those heavenly realities here and now through the Holy Spirit. Hearts restored, broken bodies healed, relationships and marriages reconciled, and whatever else is out of order is changed as heaven floods in. Let's look at the account of Pentecost. Acts 2 verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Just listen to that. A sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house. It was like heaven came down and filled the atmosphere over Jerusalem. The result was that thousands of people who were in spiritual darkness and blind to the reality of heaven and God suddenly experienced the light of heaven and they came to surrender their lives to King Jesus. In one moment, the atmosphere over Jerusalem shifted as revival broke out. God showed up. Heaven is heaven because God is there. So when God shows up here, then heaven also breaks out around us. So let's pursue that. The verse continues in verse 3. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Heaven came down. And the Holy Spirit was revealed to each of them as tongues of fire. No longer was the presence of God reserved uh, for a few holy priests or prophets. Suddenly, every one of them, ordinary fishermen, peasants, and other nobodies, according to the elite of society, received the presence of God upon them. One tongue of fire 
on every head. They could physically see the fire of the Holy Spirit as heaven became that real, breaking out of the spiritual realm into the physical realm. It was like these two realms, heaven and earth, overlapped. They could see, feel, and sense that God has just showed up. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings the reality of heaven to earth. That is why your relationship with the Holy Spirit is so important. The fullness of the Spirit, the infilling of the Spirit is available to you right now. It says there that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, came and filled them, came to dwell within them. It's like the atmosphere of heaven came upon them and within them. This is incredible. We don't have to wait for one day. It is now available. Now, I have experienced something similar to this outpouring of the Spirit, yet in way smaller measures. When I sensed the presence of God draw near, filling me and filling my environment, nothing in this world can compare to that. And anything becomes possible. Heaven just came down and there's more available to all of us right now. A few weeks ago, the mom of a Brazilian lady we prayed for in Rio de Janeiro sent me a message. She sent me a message to say thank you for praying for her daughter four years ago. At the end of one of uh, our meetings in Rio de Janeiro, we prayed for a lady, Jody Costa, who had stage four cancer and she was dying. As we prayed, we simply released the presence of God over her and commanded healing in Jesus' mighty name. Heaven flooded in and as she tested herself, all the swelling in the nodes of her neck and arms were instantly gone. She was shocked. We were too. <laughs> She felt way better, went to the doctors, and over the next few weeks, she was declared completely healed from cancer. Praise God. Four years later, she is still healed. How wonderful is that? In heaven, there is no cancer. So when heaven floods in, cancer must go. In Jesus' name. Such moments are defining. You cannot be the same again. Standing in His beautiful presence, And then his presence heals. It is like experiencing a bit of heaven on earth. As I said, nothing compares. Now revival begins with you. Revival begins with one person who is insatiably hungry for more of God. A person that won't settle for the status quo, but whose heart is set on the reality of heaven. And that hunger grows and grows to a church community and God willing to a large part of the church in a nation that begins to pound the gates of heaven together in worship and prayer saying, Come Lord Jesus, come do it again. Pentecost, revival, where we declare, move again, God, show up tangibly, your kingdom come for your glory. When Pentecost happened, when the Holy Spirit was poured out from heaven, it was like the kingdom of heaven suddenly breaking into this world, bringing the heavenly atmosphere here. The disciples were transformed from fearful and timid to bold and powerful. You cannot remain the same when you encounter His tangible presence. The love of God flooded their souls, causing them to do whatever it took to reach others for Christ. They were willing to die for Jesus, to see souls turn to Christ because their hearts were set on heaven. The fear of death had nothing on them because they dwelt in a heavenly atmosphere. They became the true them, bold, liberated, as the kingdom of heaven flooded into their souls. They discovered or encountered the true standard of heaven for themselves and those around them. And these guys couldn't go back to the old way. The apostles and other disciples then made it their mission in life to pursue and to sustain the presence of God, the heavenly atmosphere in their environment through prayer, through worship, And through God's word, they set their hearts and minds on the Pentecost reality, staying their norm. And it was so for many years as the revival continued. So where do we start if we were to pursue another Pentecost here and now? 
The Holy Spirit whispered this to my heart some time ago. I must first do a deep work within you before I can do a great work through you. You see, it begins with a deep thirst, a hunger for more of God. Be stirred for more and allow God to do a deep work in you because then he's going to do a deep work through you. And another time I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, as you give me your heart, I give you mine. As we surrender our hearts to God and to the Lordship of Christ, then the love of God, which is tangible in heaven, floods into our hearts and we begin to love people more than before. I can so relate to this. Before surrendering my life to Jesus, I didn't like people very much. I was an angry, bitter young man that had been hurt by people. And so I liked animals more than people until Jesus got a hold of my heart. And now my heart breaks for people. There's no problem with liking or loving animals, but our love for people should be way more. Jesus shed his blood for every soul on this earth. In the Old Testament, we see this promise of what Pentecost and the outpouring of the Spirit will look like. Ezekiel 36 verse 25 says, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols, your false gods. We see here the work of the Holy Spirit in us. He begins to clean us up and to turn our hearts away from other things unto God himself. It's like we come to our senses and realize that only God himself will satisfy us. This truth is confirmed by this quote by C.S. Lewis. Nearly all that we call human history is the long, terrible story of man trying to find happiness in something other than God. That's true. We try other things, but it doesn't satisfy. It leads to more pain and to disappointment. Set your heart on heaven, on God himself. The scripture continues in verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. When the Holy Spirit is poured out, a miracle happens in our hearts. We receive a new heart and a new spirit. His spirit comes and lives with us. God removes the heart of stone. I love that. And we receive compassion for others. Our hearts begin to break for people. There are so many stories in our church of hard-hearted men who received a soft, gentle heart after turning to Jesus. This is the miracle God does within us. Become aware of God and let Him work a deep work in you. And you will begin to care about others like never before. You come alive. There's something so beautiful about loving people. And then the scripture says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. We become empowered to do the will of God, even like the apostles and the early disciples were. They were changed because revival begins with each one of us. And then they were moved by God's compassion to reach many others with God's love. They were relentless as they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. They took a stand for Jesus, boldly preaching, even with hostile audiences like the religious leaders of the time and many others. We need the power of the Spirit for boldness to do God's will. I love this statement. The man who is intimate with God isn't intimidated by man. Pursue his tangible presence. Sustain the atmosphere of heaven in your life through worship and prayer, and you will receive a boldness to share with others what Jesus has done for you. The message that Jesus preached 2,000 years ago is still the message we need to hear and share with others today from a place of intimacy with God. Matthew 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, turn to God and away from all other things. Repent, turn your heart to God instead of all the other options. 
for the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven is ready to invade right now. So turn your heart to the reign of King Jesus. Change your way of thinking and, and align your whole being, soul, spirit, body with Him. Then heaven will invade earth tangibly, manifestly. The world needs Jesus. And so we need to seek Him with everything within us. Revival flows forth from changed hearts. I love the story that Andres Bissoni shared who is a man who moves powerfully in the Holy Spirit. So a young man uh, was brought to him at the end of a church service by the young man's mom. Now this young man didn't want to be there. He wasn't interested in God and he was on the wrong path. Andres shared with him about Jesus, but he wasn't interested. The young man wasn't shifting his position or changing his mind. Until the next moment, Andres says he sensed the presence of the Holy Spirit just above him. And then suddenly the Holy Spirit flooded into this young man. The next moment, the young man clutched his heart and went to the floor crying out, I must change. Wow, now that is the power of the Spirit. Someone bound by darkness, by lies and sin, but suddenly he shifted from darkness to light and the, as the kingdom of heaven floods into him. That is what God wants to do in many lives. May that happen to our cities and to our nations and to each one listening to my voice right now. Revival begins with you. One man or woman surrendered to the will of God can change a nation. One man or woman in whom the kingdom of God reigns will cause heaven to invade earth. Personal revival is the starting point for Pentecost. The kingdom of God must first reign in us before it can reign through us. We must become carriers of the tangible presence of God. I've asked this question to the Lord. God, when will the kingdom come? His answer to my heart was, when my kingdom reigns within you. The kingdom of God is not an uncertain future. It is available to you right now. Let the kingdom of God reign within you. Let the atmosphere of heaven flood into your soul. Luke chapter 17 says, Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here, or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. That's where it starts, must first come within you. Jesus was asked, when, kingdom, when? And he said, you won't see it by looking at it with, for it with your physical eyes or your physical senses. The kingdom is within you. Let it first come within you. Let the kingdom reign within you, and then it will surely reign through you. We have a ma married couple they were standing on divorce quite recently. It was really game over. Both were showing the wrong signs. Both were hurt. But over the last few months, as we walked a journey with them and pointed them in the right direction to worship together, to pray together, and to begin to invest in one another, things turned. It is an absolute miracle. The kingdom of God came in their hearts, and the result is a restored marriage. Thank you, Jesus. That is so beautiful. When heaven becomes our greater reality, then heaven will invade earth. Turn your heart to heaven today. Begin to dwell in that reality, the greater reality, and begin to pursue and sustain the atmosphere of heaven through worship and prayer. There's incredible worship happening in heaven right now. Join the song of heaven, the sound of heaven, through beautiful, powerful worship, and you will see the kingdom of heaven come upon you. That is the power of worship. And the kingdom of God will reign. Your, your marriage will be turned. Your life will be changed. As you enter God's presence with praise, He will step into your circumstances with power. So step into that place of praise. In Jesus' name. So repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In 2012, my life was radically changed when I had to admit, God, I've been aiming too low. 
I'd settle for the status quo, for a Holy Spiritless Christianity. I didn't know God's power nor His presence as I should have. As I became aware of others walking in a way deeper measure in God than I was, I had to repent. And so I asked God for forgiveness, for not seeking His tangible presence, which Pentecost reveals. From that time on, I've set my sights on Him in a greater measure. And the result, which our changed lives have been way more significant. It is only through the power of the Holy Spirit. So what needs to change in you? What, what needs to shift? This is my challenge to you today, to evaluate yourself and to repent, to turn to God so that His kingdom can flood in. Turn your heart to Jesus. If you don't have a living relationship with Him especially, He is all you're truly desiring in this life. But even if you know Jesus, realign your life, your heart with Him. Are you setting your heart, your life, your goals on the reality of heaven? Of His tangible presence? Of pursuing revival? Or are your eyes and heart squarely set on earthly things which cannot satisfy? How about joining us in pursuing more of God? Do you need God to give you a new heart for your marriage to be healed? Do you need a soft heart, a forgiving heart? Or maybe you need a heart of compassion for others. If we really love people, we will pursue the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So let's turn our hearts and minds to God today. Because heaven is drawing near right now. So pray this prayer with me right now. I'm going to lead you in this prayer. Say, Father God, forgive us for losing sight of you and your tangible glorious presence. We long for Pentecost again and again. We give our hearts to you and ask for hearts of compassion for those who do not know you. And we ask for a new hunger, a thirst for the atmosphere of heaven to reign within us and around us in Jesus' name. Come, Lord Jesus, come in the fullness of your glorious presence so that lives may be transformed. We ask for revival. Thank you, Jesus, that revival's in the air. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening and praying that prayer. Let's pursue revival together. More of God is available. Let's seek Him and live. And I'll see you in the next video. Bless you.